it's me, Erin. Thanks for joining us on the More Love Podcast. Do not tell Rebecca, but this podcast is about empathy. She likes people to think she's dead inside, but the truth is she's a big time feeler who has truly helped me uncover that empathy is my superpower. Here she comes. Hey, bestie. Hi, love. What are you doing? Oh, just getting ready to host a podcast. A podcast? About what? A life. Our life as best friends who are more like sisters. Ah, yay! I love us and I can't wait to share our stories with the world. Especially the ones that involve us pushing each other, right? To be our most authentic selves. Oh, man. Okay. I need to open this podcast. Okay. (laughs) I need to open this because you get less than 24 hours of being 41. I know. I know. Uh I know. Mm-hmm. I do. So you better, you better live I'm it up. bringing it up so many times. You better live it up. Hear the number as your, as your elder. Yes. As your superior. Yes. Yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh-huh. yes. Mm-hmm. It's the yeah. first thing I thought of this morning when I woke up. I'm oh, like, me too. She has less than one day. Actually, every day for the last 15 days. <laughs> is the first thing I've been thinking. So you can live it up today. Oh, yeah. And that's it. And then we're going to hear the number 41 (laughs) so many times today. You're going to (laughs) be so sick of it. I mean, I know. How is it to be 42? It's rough. It's fine. It's rough. I mean, it's fine. Do you feel like one foot in the grave almost? I mean, (laughs) I felt like that at 35. So it's It's true. It's fine. Don't forget that there's a guy who's pushing 51 over here. So Scott, it's fine. A foot in the grave at at 42. It's fine. Makes me feel like I'm already 10 years dead. (laughs) (laughs) So when I was watching that intro and I was remembering um, when you turned 40, I did 40 days of our stories on um, Facebook. Yep. And somebody had said we should put that into a book. And I thought about that for a while. But then I'm like, how do I recount them all? I just realized on Facebook, there's like Facebook memories yeah. that are different yeah, than the... Realize. That's I thought they were the same as Time Hop. That's good. Oh, you no, thought you had no. to write them again? No, I was just, just I was going to go back and just like through your scroll. Okay. Yeah, you, but, you can go into into like the timeline of, of Facebook and go back to the year. Stop it. Yeah. it's That makes it even easier. Yeah. Well, you're not getting that book for your birthday but um, (laughs) our stories are hilarious and I was just watching that um, intro again and I realized that that one picture of us in the kayaks is from our 30th birthday and when we went to Mexico Mm -hmm. and you made it very clear to everybody on the beach absolutely not only the beach but anywhere we went everywhere we went that day with shirts that I was older than you was that (laughs) was it was it on your birthday that we went to that stupid pirate ship no it wasn't my birthday it was your birthday event yes the one in mexico yeah. the pirate ship that was supposed to be off into it was in cancun and yeah. we were supposed to go out into the sea meet up with another pirate ship and they were gonna be like we had a do fight. a fight there mm-hmm. was gonna be like an actual and there was, fight. it was gonna be a lobster dinner but what happened instead <laughs> um we never left the port it was a disco dancing party and we were very confused and there was a p- one piece of chunk lobster Pissed. And, and we a got lot a free t-shirt. Potatoes. Yeah. There was a lot of potatoes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then we got a free but t-shirt. We did go to another, we did go to another restaurant. I think it was on the property. And um they came out with a cake and it said, Happy birthday, Karen. <laughs> Happy birthday, Karen. And the guy kept saying, Karen, smell the cake. And I was so confused. We by were that, all confused. But I'm like, well, I'm in Mexico. Maybe they do cakes different here. Right. So she goes down to smell it and they shoved her face shoved in. Shoved my face <laughs> right in the cake. I my head comes up I'm and like, I got frosting, cake pieces. I didn't know all what to do. Over. I was like, I, I was both pissed <laughs> and surprised floored at the same time. Yeah. It I was next level. Never in my life have I seen anything like that. <laughs> no, me neither. <laughs> it was really funny. But anyway, so that was 30th. And then the 40th, we went to to um Florida. And so our 50th is Fiji. Yes. I mean, we've to... talked about Fiji for a long time. Yeah. We're going to get one of those bungalows just together. Yeah. Our husbands are coming. One of the ones that um, <laughs> over the over the over the ocean. little the ocean mm-hmm. that you can see the bottom floor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just us. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Absolutely. It's the most romantic place in the world. We're going for our 50th birthday. <laughs> for Fine. <laughs> We've been saving, mm-hmm. actually, all mm-hmm. year mm-hmm. to go there. <laughs> no, and I'll, you're 42. So, yeah. Right. We've I'm been saving for... You need a video diary of that. I know. Just, uh, uh, yeah. Right? 50 and I'll Fiji. I'll do it for free. You just get, my, get me there. Okay. <laughs> Can you even imagine the types of t-shirts we're getting for that one? That's great. Could you, mm-hmm. could you even imagine what my wife would say? No, right. <laughs> uh-huh. yes, Scott, hey, Rebecca, it's a and job, Aaron, honey. It's a job. Right, in a bungalow yeah. uh-huh. mm-hmm. over the ocean mm-hmm. in Fiji. Right. Well, it's funny you say that because I work for this dad's group and I plan all their retreats. And the first thing we talk about is we can't pick a location that's sexy. We can't pick a location that is um, nude beaches, uh, right, or romantic in any sort of way, because the wives will be like, "Where are you going? Yeah." What and, are you doing? And with who and why? You're, yeah. you're relegated to a, a, a econo lodge in Des Moines. Yeah, right. That's yeah. It. Right. 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 So every yeah. time, every time we go, you know, every time I look at a location, I'm like, "What? This better be super manly." Yeah. Like, you know, Moines the wife's home with the kids, right? And she's not interested in seeing your pictures of Costa Rica. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so we make it very, very dude friendly. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah. So, you know, happy early birthday. 41. 40, well, Still 41. Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. Some of us are. <laughs> I'm the youngest one in this studio. <laughs> probably the building. Yep. I <laughs> guess so. You're absolutely right. Do you think I'm younger than the um, post office worker who uses the toilet, Scott? You know, I don't know how old that person is. You well, think they he's are very, younger than 41? They're very consistent. He's, they... he's got a really good excretion system. I mean, it's always on time. <laughs> he's very regular. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. the, the, the mail comes here at around between 10, 30 and 11. And so if I see the truck parked out there at two, I know what he's doing. Mm. <laughs> and I'm getting here. I'm like, oh, he's in the shitter. Oh, <laughs> oh, you mean he comes here just to take a shit? Yeah. Well, so they come by at two o'clock to empty the uh, mailbox that's outside. Oh, and so he's here doing well, something. Well, we're here, we're emptying his... something else. <laughs> okay, I thought you meant that he just knows that there's a quote unquote public restroom here and just comes in because he I knows. I would do that. I mean, it is. Yeah. I mean, if I you're mean... on the road all the day, you want to you want to find a nice clean bathroom, and it just so happens that Tuesdays is when they come and clean the bathroom. So I was really angry because I'm like, oh, oh man, yeah. because yeah. let's just let's let's face it, the dude. I don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, he, he shits dainty. a ton in there. He ain't dainty and, about uh, it. <laughs> and and there's there's streaks left over. And I'm like, oh. God, what are you eating? Spackle? What the hell is that? I don't know. <laughs> Do you have a toilet brush in there? Yeah, I got a toilet brush. And he doesn't oh. use it? He does not use it. Uh, no, you don't care. Yeah. No. You know, ain't my, ain't so, my John. Yeah. Speaking of toilet situations. <laughs> Thankfully. The other day, two days ago, Monday, I was at Monroe Muffler getting my Oil changed. Yeah. And so I stay there and I don't leave. So, yeah. that you know, they have the little waiting room. Yeah. Well, this man comes in. Okay. He sat next to me. Okay. And the whole time his stomach, this is when you had to get off the phone to go yes. on the call. Right. And her stomach is gurgling so loud and I'm trying. Yeah. I'm trying not to pay attention. Does he not go into the toilet right oh, next to us? No, no. And can you hear everything? Oh, oh everything. no. He's not okay. I know. He's not I know. okay. So at that point, I'm like, I got to go. So I walked out into the tire area and I'm like, how long till my car is done? Okay. So not good. now that we're talking about it, how how are you on public shitting? Fine. You're yeah. fine? No oh, problem. Yeah. yeah. Mark's not. Not a big deal. Not a, not a big I, fan. For whatever reason, it's a me- I think it's a man thing. Why, Philip won't either? Uh, he, I think if he has to, he will, but... but it, I think he prefers not to. I don't even want hmm. Kelly walking in to the bathroom when I'm on the dumper. Oh, she's that's like, where we oh, have our on. best We've talks. been married for 21 years. I'm like, this is the only time mm. that's mine. This is that's where we oh. have our we have our best talks. Phil's Phil like, like, I got to take on a shit. the toilet, and then Rebecca will go sit on his lap. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's true. We're not like whatever that it takes in mm-hmm. the Avery home, but mm-hmm. <laughs> he will shut the door if he's upstairs. Oh, so the well, girls, because yeah, the girls are walking right. by. But if he's in his man yeah. toilet area, yeah. he just in leaves his, it wide open. In his man toilet, which is also funny because wall, no, he has his man ground. bathroom. That's his bathroom, and he can do what he wants in there. But it's if the door yeah. is open to the front, like to the road, you can see right in. Yeah, he absolutely. doesn't give a shit. No, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so weird. Yep, doesn't give a shit. Yep, Mark will not <sighs> go any place public. Mm. He will. 
I will if, I'm ha- if I have to, I will. But I don't like to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got no problem. And I'll pick a bathroom that's like way on the other side where there's nobody around that I can. <laughs> hmm. Wow. Yeah. That's really, I wonder what that says about vulnerability. Hmm. <laughs> I just don't like people hearing me shit. That's huh? what Mark says. He doesn't like that either. He'll he'll wait the person out. And I'm like, how? Number one, why are you in there that long? Right. You what and are I, you, doing? you and I are in and out. Oh, right. my gosh. At 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 work where I for the Amherst at the Blue Cross Arena, there's a bathroom that's right around the corner from the production room. And um, I'm always going out there to to pee before we start the, the game. And invariably every time i go there i see the door just shutting and i'm like (laughs) and there's an old man Mm. now maybe it's because he's old but when he goes in there it's like well i'm i'm gonna walk to the other side of the building because there's no way in hell i'm getting in there before the game starts Mm -hmm. i swear to god he's in there for 25 minutes Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i'm like i feel bad because i'm like god what's wrong with him like what the hell you know yeah, he's got to drink more water. <laughs> or he's just, he's just hanging out, reading the Facebooks. Right. That's playing like... a game, whatever. But you know what? I read the other day a meme or something that said, if you if you go to the bathroom at work and sit on the toilet for 15 minutes every day, that's equivalent to two weeks paid vacation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> two weeks paid vacation. <laughs> we, have, we have a sign that says... Uh, in, in the bathroom, I forget how it's worded, but it says something like "shit and split." So <laughs> this isn't this isn't social media breaks. Shit mm-hmm. and split. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's funny. Uh, I'm glad we're talking about this because I don't want to talk about a book I just started no, reading. I don't either. <laughs> we decided that 2024 was the year of healing. The year of healing and but then once we started, then we started healing, and, and we're like, we're all oh, over it. All done. <laughs> Okay, yeah. I'm all set with that. I don't think so. I know. It's too deep. It was a little too deep. So Rebecca, I pull in. She's sitting in the parking lot. I She's not paying attention to me, so I honk my horn. <laughs> she looks over. I put my, my uh, window down, mm-hmm. and I'm like, get in this car right now. <laughs> she's like, okay. So she gets out of the car. She goes to get in the car, and I'm like, do you remember that time that you had me listen to the beginning prologue of the Paris Hilton book? Mm-hmm. And she's like, yeah. I'm like, well, this is my version, and don't I turn on the book Codependency No More. What Mm-mm. is going on? I know. I know. Well, we learned a lot about what codependency means. Yes. I so was, I defined our it very differently. Away. Mm-hmm. We, you and I, mm-hmm. are not codependent. I'm sad to say we're I bonded. I know. We're a bonded pair. Mm-hmm. We're twin flames. <laughs> <laughs> we are um, unhealthfully obsessed with each other. Mm-hmm. We um, maybe understand what each other's thinking when the other person isn't around so maybe there's an intuitive bond we're all of those things Mm -hmm. but we are not not codependent codependent. Mm -hmm. you know who is codependent me (laughs) it's me well i am too also you Uh, right right (laughs) but with other people in our lives Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so we have a lot of dissecting we have a lot to talk Mm -hmm. about with but let me just tell you listeners Mm mm-hmm We'll review that. We'll do a book review. You read it first, then I'll read it, and then we'll do a book review. You guys will like this one. I'll tell you what. I'm one hour and 20 minutes in, and one, I've cried three times, Mm -hmm. and also I've had to stop and rewind it a couple times because I'm like, she needs to say that again. Mm -hmm. What did she just say? Mm -hmm. It's absolutely fascinating. I know you so well that you're going to read. This is an audio book. It's already in your Amazon cart. Because you need to go and reread it so you can take notes and do highlight and write them down. I, I know. know. And you also know what my new research is, <laughs> interest is, codependency. It's on the relationship between codependency. It's on the relationship between, I'm not kidding. I thought about I this on the way here. Mm-hmm. It's on the relationship between having strong amounts of empathy and mm-hmm. codependency. Mm-hmm. And then who has strong amounts of empathy? People in nonprofits. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to talk about the relationship between nonprofits, codependency, empathy, Mm -hmm. and how um, a lot of what they were saying in this book is that a lot of people who are in the helping professions Mm -hmm. tend to be codependent people. Mm -hmm. Now, the definition of codependent is something that she's saying in the book. It doesn't have a really great 
definition. People really? will talk about codependency as like its characteristics, mm-hmm. but it doesn't really have a wonderful definition to date. Mm-hmm. So of course, don't I think to myself, absolutely, I'm about to be the lead researcher who figures out a great definition of codependency. Mm-hmm. It's fine. That's that's my Capricorn spirit coming in. Mm-hmm. But um, what I've realized at the way that she just described it was something along the lines of you are a codependent person if you are someone who allows your moods to be drastically changed by the people around you. And if you find yourself obsessed and or enmeshed with the feelings and behaviors of others in your desire to want to control them so that you can control their behavior so that you in turn can feel better. Mm. Totally paraphrasing that, but that's essentially the essence mm-hmm. of what she was saying. Which is interesting because when she said that, I looked at you and I said, I would never I know. have defined it like that. I, I would have defined that as a trauma bond. Yes. Right. And so right. then in, when we sat back and we listened, I was like, oh my gosh, I mean, okay, okay, yes. I can see clearer now. Yes. Well, that's another article then, the relationship between trauma bond and codependency mm-hmm. and what the difference is mm-hmm. between the two. And right. Do they coexist or right. are they different? Right. Or can you have one without the other? Right. And what I'm learning is you don't always have to have trauma. Mm-hmm. So the term codependency came about in the chemical dependency profession where Um, people who were addicted to alcohol or other substances had a tendency to also be attached to people who would be codependent. Um, They're called non-alcoholics. They have all these these different names. Mm -hmm. So it really came up in the substance abuse, chemical dependency arena because people who were experiencing trauma and turned to substances Mm -hmm. for their escape Mm -hmm. also had usually attached to them someone who typically was a non-alcoholic, non-substance user, but who equally was attached to the need to control that energy. They just weren't doing it through the form of substance abuse. Mm -hmm. So what happens in that- Are they also the enabler? um, Or is that different? No. Hmm. So- that's that's article number three, because that's really interesting <laughs> mm-hmm. to think about. Right. Mm-hmm. Really what this book so far, again, I'm only like chapter two mm-hmm. has said it's called Codependency No More. And it's the new edition came out in 2022 on Valentine's Day um, it was saying that people who are codependent tend to be people who are strong, head fast, controlling, um, can be rude, can can tell you what's wrong with you. Why are you doing this? They're checking your consumption of certain products. They're angry at you because of your spending behaviors. They have all of these like strategies in place that are trying to figure out if they can keep track of what you're doing because so much of what they're doing is trying to manage and control the situation because they themselves are so impacted by mm-hmm. what it is that you're doing. Mm-hmm. And that people who are codependent often get a bad rap for being people who are, again, these nasty, controlling, you know, my way or the highway kind of people. But when you dig deep into the life of the codependent, this is the part that I'm finding so fascinating. Often it's coming from um, highly controlled and non-emotive family environments Mm -hmm. where Big feelings are happening and they can just be normal everyday things that happen in a family all the way to things like adult children of alcoholics or those types of things. Mm -hmm. And the inability of the family to be able to bring awareness to different feelings or thoughts, families that will push it under the rug and pretend there's nothing to see here. Mm -hmm. Families who will have, um, what did I tell you in the car? Something like families who have trouble navigating the canoe down the river of life mm-hmm. is essentially how she put it. Mm-hmm. And so you have these people like you and I, highly emotional, highly sensitive, intuitive of, of sorts, mm-hmm. who then are in this highly controlled militant type environment, often by people who themselves are codependent, mm. right? Fascinating. Mm. And their desire to control the feelings of their children, Mm -hmm. i.e. you and I, Mm -hmm. have a tendency to be because they themselves wanted to control that because Mm -hmm. they themselves, right? It just keeps going down the line. Mm -hmm. So what I'm finding out now is that it comes from these types of controlling relationships in which 
you're trying to inhibit the feelings, the reactions and the behaviors that these people have. And so they in turn don't have great outlets for how to process and feel emotion. Mm -hmm. But like you and I, they're highly sensitive, highly feeling people. Mm -hmm. So talk about a bubble bursting, Mm -hmm. right? They're Mm -hmm. just imploding from the inside. So then they get out into normal relationship type environments, right? And start to have relationships with other people, start to date, start to build friendships, those types of things. Mm -hmm. And these people have a tendency to subconsciously pick people who are, as she described it, they can be ill, Mm -hmm. they can be maladaptive, Mm -hmm. they can be bizarre. Mm -hmm. She used the word bizarre. They have a tendency to be attracted to bizarre. Is that not me? Mm -hmm. I will sit next to the person who looks the most bizarre on a bus because Mm -hmm. I'm thinking to myself, I got to know this person. Mm -hmm. I have to know what the heck's going on Mm -hmm. with them. I got to ask them questions, Mm -hmm. right? I got to walk into the Target bathroom. Someone's pounding their head on the the wall. I got to know what's going on there, right? And so it almost in some ways creates this environment where you get to feel your feelings and you get to put your feelings out in other people. And you also get to control in a way. Control has a negative connotation, but... But if you think of it in terms of having been so hurt Mm -hmm. and so stifled, Mm -hmm. your desire to control that reaction is your desire to manage the feelings that you are going to have. Yes. Right. Does all this make sense? Does that is that like this is like extra smoky today? Absolutely. But then we talked about how it parallels with the savior complex and Mm -hmm. how all of that um, control is such a hard word to use. Um, It's it's. Because it sounds vindictive. Yeah. yeah. And, and the same thing with like counseling. Go to counseling. It yeah. just has this yes. attachment to it. But um, I guess at the end of the day, that's that's what it is. It's a control of I don't want my children to feel any pain. So I'm going to control this situation. Therefore, we create a codependency yep. kind of thing. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't want to. You know, whatever it is with a domestic partnership all all of that um it's fascinating but codependent before reading this book to me meant so enmeshed with each other that you can't even go to the mailbox to get the mail by yourself right right or i have to text you 37 times because i just experienced something and you need to experience it yes and again, we've determined that's bonding obsession. Right. <laughs> Remember when I sent you the double-sided toilet? Yeah. And then you said... I said that the other day. There's two toilets in one bathroom. <laughs> right. And you're like, this is how we'll go to the bathroom from now on. <laughs> and then you said I'd, something about... What was it, the meme about the driver's license picture? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not close enough to you. I'd like to be with you on your driver's license. <laughs> that's just obsessive bonding. Right? I mean... Yeah. Yeah, that sounds that's better obsessive, than codependency. Obsessive with each other. And it just that actually feels right on point. <laughs> right, right, that right. That feels right, absolutely right, right. But you and I, we are not codependent with each other no. because I don't try and control what you do I at mean, all. In fact, I prefer <laughs> you just do the craziest shit ever. And then I'll just shake my head and be like, this is absolutely nuts. Right? Yeah. So yeah. it's not about that. Mm-hmm. But but I think it's fascinating that this came about in the chemical dependency field. However, it is not just in chemical dependency situations that this occurs. In one example they provided, it was a woman who had zero chemical dependency background in her family or her um, husband's family. Her fa- her husband had no chemical dependency. It was just non-existent in their family. Mm-hmm. She said, however, this woman just felt so enmeshed with the feelings of her significant other that if he was happy, she was happy. If he wasn't happy, she wasn't happy. She would try incredibly hard to make him happy. He would get annoyed. She would be defeated. That is me. That that whole scenario is me to a T. Mm. It is a a enmeshment of Mm -hmm. taking on the feelings and reactions of other people. Mm -hmm. And it is highly alert in my family and closest friend unit, Mm. right? So if I notice that you're not responding to text messages, Mm -hmm. it's almost as if I become one with you and Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, what is going on with her? Is everything okay? Is it not okay? Says that it triggers an anxiety reaction. Mm -hmm. And then the anxiety reaction just triggers this downward spiral of like, is she okay? Is she not okay? I see this with Mark 
daily, Mm. daily Mm -hmm. to the point where I'm obsessively saying to him, I noticed that you weren't as quick to step up and help out with that scenario. Is there a reason for that? Or I noticed that um, you haven't been talking as much at the dinner table as you usually are. Mm -hmm. Is everything okay? Mm -hmm. It's an enmeshment with the energy. Here's the really effed up part of all of it. Mark's also codependent. Mm -hmm. So he's watching my every single move. Mm -hmm. He's an adult child of an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. So he has codependency tendencies. He is now connected with me in such a way that if my energy is off, Mm -hmm. he's now super in tune with that. And then what we're doing all the time is constantly playing off of each other's energy changes because I didn't realize my energy off, but now I'm reacting to his energy that's off because my energy was off. Mm, Right. So it's this constant. It's constant cycle. That's why when it's great Mm -hmm. and everyone's happy and everyone's in a good mood and right. Mm -hmm. It couldn't be any better. Mm -hmm. But when one tiny thing starts to, and how many times does that happen over the course of a day, Mm -hmm. right? Give you this tiny little interaction or thought that Mm -hmm. maybe something's off. Mm -hmm. It triggers the codependence response. Mm -hmm. And then the enmeshment comes up and then I need to fix that. And what do we do as codependents? Mm -hmm. We get quietly defensive. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we pull back Mm -hmm. and then we start to do things like, all right, well, I'm just going to sit back and watch what he does in this scenario because I have to watch and see, was this just a one-time thing or is this now a pattern, Mm -hmm. right? So instead of, because we haven't been people who grew up in relationships where it was safe to say, what's going on with you right now? Mm -hmm. Why are you reacting in that way? Mm -hmm. We've been trained and conditioned to put on a smile and everything's totally fine. But what are you doing the whole time? Assessing the shit out of the situation. Mm -hmm. But when you're always doing that in your entire family, Mm -hmm. right? You're just one big walking assessing (laughs) time bomb all over the place yeah i mean there's not a lot of um detoxing is not the right word Mm -hmm. but what's um what does what does that mean when you maybe it is detoxing but when you are just are allowed to just be yourself and just have emotions and have all those things Mm -hmm. without being questioned about it every five minutes yeah yeah that doesn't exist no, mm-hmm. not not in many environments. Mm-hmm. Or if it does exist, decompress. Yeah, that's the word. Yeah, not detox. Same thing. <laughs> this is fine. That's fine. Same thing. Yeah. When it does exist, this is where the safety comes in because you want to be around people that you know if they're having a problem or if they're concerned about you mm-hmm. that they're going to speak up, so that you don't have to be the one to constantly be managing. Is she upset about something? Can I trust she's going to say something if she's upset? Did if I did I just annoy her? Right. You love to be around people mm-hmm. who in the moment are going to say, oh, my God, I'm totally having a reaction to what you just said. Mm-hmm. You love that. I prefer that. Yes. I prefer that. Yes. Because you'd rather know. Yes. And know where you stand. Right. And know that you said something. Right. Because it's never coming from a bad place. Mm -mm. So you want to acknowledge in that moment, oh my God, I didn't mean it that way. I'm really sorry about that. Right. And in many ways, I provide that safety for you Mm -hmm. because if I'm upset about something or have a reaction to something, Mm -hmm. I have to talk about Mm -hmm. it. But is that, so I just had this aha as we're sitting here. I'm thinking to myself all the times where we're together five, six, seven days traveling or whatever. And, um, or even if you come over to my house and you end up falling asleep on the couch, like I don't think to myself, oh, is she mad at me? Oh, like I'm right. never, I'm never in the, that flow. Yeah. I never feel that way because is it because I just trust that you're going to express anything when you need to? Yeah. Or even, even when we get into some sort of tense, ten, tense conversation, yep. I know deep down that if it crosses a line or this, that you're going to say, okay, I got, I got to talk about this right now. Yep. And when that doesn't happen, I can sit and go, okay, that was just a, a yes. tough conversation and we don't need to discuss it because yep. it just is what it is and we can move on. Yep. And Absolutely. So that feels so genuine and it, it doesn't make the feeling go away of that really sucked. I don't like how that feel. It feels much better when we're always in a line, yep. Yep. but it's not a, 
I'm having a reaction to you. Nope. Never. It's just sometimes topics are just what they are. You and I just think so differently and yep. we are so different and there's nothing wrong with that. So that must be the difference. Trust and safety. That it's must be the difference. Safety. But then why, why do you not feel the need to convince me to be different? Because when you say you're, because we're not codependent, <laughs> because when you say a codependent person has this need to control and to manage and to, you know, all the things. Now, in the beginning, before you were fully oh. embraced me, there was, a, you weren't, we weren't codependent. You just didn't include me. Correct. In things. Correct. Right. Which was my form of control. Correct. Right. Right. I mean, we've talked about the, talked about this before. We were friends probably 10 years before you let me meet any of your other friends. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's when you got married, I met your friends. Yeah. <laughs> and even then, I'm sure you were like, because you were all bridesmaids together. Right. And then you're all like, who are you? Right. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure you even contemplated not having me as a bridesmaid because you knew I would understand <laughs> and I would be sad, I but I would get it. I know. I know. Right. <laughs> Hilarious. Um, most people are like, you've been friends for 20 years. Yeah, actually. Not only friends, but like deep dive friends. But because they don't know that, they're like, right. well, you guys got bonded real quick. Right. <laughs> wow. Right. Like when we talk about the fact that you held my 14 year old daughter. Right. In the hospital for right. the first time and before we I already, even did. We were already knee deep. Knee deep. Into the relationship she's, at that point. She's 14. Yeah. Right. And, you know, like I just pulled up. I just pulled up a text message or a. Facebook memory of you saying something about me ruining your life. Right. Yeah. yeah even having another a baby. Right. right. <laughs> so yeah. like there's just, there's this depth and length of a relationship, but, and I never pushed it. I was, I never said to you, why don't you include me with your other friends? Because yep. I know you well enough that if I put that pressure on you, it's not okay. Mm -hmm. That's a spiral. That's a, oh, how am I going to manage? It's too much. Mm -hmm. So I'll just let you, you know what? It's okay. Yep. I'll let you do what you need to do. Test the waters, yep. all the things. But why didn't I want to control you? Why? <laughs> why now? Okay, let me think this through. So if... Now, wait. That's well, because, not to say you're not embarrassed. Not, oh. It's oh, yeah, not to say given. you don't that get is angry. Give it. It's that is not to daily. say you're like, what that is are a, you doing? Daily. Right. Especially, especially when the the thing just came up the other day from Rebecca Gates, who's like, we went and visited her at Yale. This was years ago, probably when Taylor was born. We went to visit her at Yale and we were walking around the Yale campus and decided to join in a tour. Mm -hmm. And we get to the library and what did they say? This is, these books behind the glass are like... They bring them out to showcase them or, oh, yeah. you know, you know, they, they're, like they are vintage, like, like original author. You touch it, it's going to disintegrate. Type of thing. Yeah. And then we get to this open area and she's like, and this is where we have all the parties. And this is where students come. Yeah. For parties. Right. And we're like, and party in the library. Right. We just look at each other and then everybody's just standing there. And I do. It is all of, I have to, I have to just, <laughs> to, I just have to say this. All of the people who are here mm -hmm. have an IQ of like 400. Oh, yeah. These oh, yeah. people are brilliant. Yeah, they're touring like, the campus to come here. You can actually get into right. Yale. Right. right. We just, we were just like, cool, we love higher education. Right. This we want is a tour. This is institution. And right? I'm thinking, this they're is asking where... intellectual questions. Right. They ask some question about some, what version of some book was available in the library. We're like, what the what hell the are hell? these people talking about? And in my mind, I'm obsessed with Gilmore Girls. Okay. And I know she went there. And so I'm okay. looking and I'm like, oh, that's where she did blah, blah, blah. But like, that's all I care about. Yeah. So the tour guide says, and this is where they have all of the parties and everybody's just standing around like this, you know, in a circle. It's a circle. And everybody's looking and I go <laughs> and I just go. I do the move from SNL when the lady, you know, smells her armpits and then goes, <laughs> puts yep. her arms up. And knee I go, down, arms up. Knee down, arms up. I go, party on, party people. <laughs> <laughs> Dead pan. This was everybody. <laughs> and you gave me I a look. I turned around. I left the circle. I went to go touch a book that I had no clue what it was because I was so mortified in that moment. Yeah. Yeah. No one skipped a beat. Nope. 
No one said anything. Nope. They were just like, so let's carry on into <laughs> this part of the library. So we got up and kept- you get up. I look at you. <laughs> You're like, what? <laughs> what? I know. I know. That was not OK. I know. But that was great. <laughs> but now, now here's what would happen if that happened now. One, I would know. Right. She's about to right. SNL it in the middle right. of this circle. Right. And she's going to say, no, party no, on, but, party first, people. but first, as you can see it coming down oh, the pipe, no, I feel you it. would give me the look. You I would, felt you would, it. You'd, and you'd be like this with your hands. I know. I'd, I'd do this. Right. I'd point, I'd point right at you. And then I would be like, oh, look at me. Look at Not focus. the place. Right. Not the place. <laughs> and then you'd be like this. <laughs> I'm going to do it. I know. I'm going to do it. I know. And then I would just know because I would feel it. I'd I know. feel all of the energy next to you. I would turn to Rebecca Gates mm-hmm. and I would be like, it's coming. <laughs> it's coming. But she would know it too. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. It's funny. Not good. It's funny. Not good. <laughs> <laughs> pretty sure. Pretty sure you didn't speak to me for a little bit. No, as I'm going to get my my book, touching some <laughs> random book to like make myself feel like a little bit better. Mm-hmm. You then come up to me after and I said get out of here (laughs) and you said what and I said I do not want to be seen with you right right now you're gonna walk in front of me you're like this is a prestigious place I'm like I'm like do you know what people pay to get in here and I'm like that's not what they meant (laughs) they don't mean that kind of party god so Listen. Anyway, read the book Codependent No More. We're reading it right now. At least oh, yeah. I am. But you're <laughs> I'm gonna be reading it because I'm, I'm reading Paris Hilton's biography. <laughs> basically telling which is you also about it all the time. Very good. Uh, mm-hmm. but we'll have more insights into that as well. But that that's that is next level. That was a game changer. Welcome 2024. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. All right, get us with your hippie boo. You needed to pull this card for you today. I did, I did, but I don't think it's for me. Oh, no. Is it for me? I've had that one before. Is it the freaking swords? Yep. But then again, it could be for me, too. Okay. It's the two of swords. It's the um, alligator with the two swords in his tail. Okay. Um, Caution. Double-edged sword. Meaning alert. This card may mark a time of solo indecision for you, or it could mean you need to reach some sort of compromise with someone else. In either or both cases, it indicates an oh-so-joyful jog on the hamster wheel of little progress. And you know what? That's okay. Take a pause and chill for a minute. It's better to wait in the wings until you know what role you want to play than to rush on on stage and blurt out the wrong lines. So bide your time, player. Be patient. Maybe find a friend to help you wield that sword. And while they're at it, maybe the other one too, because those suckers are heavy. So the affirmation is, I patiently I patiently glide through this time of inaction without worry or stress. It isn't often I get a free ticket to a lazy river. Oh, yeah. I mean, I can see that for parts of me, too, just yeah, because absolutely. of my transition. But um, it's for both of us. Yeah. I see it for both of us. Yeah. You professionally, me personally. Yeah. Yeah. That, that card makes perfect sense. Yeah. Although it is weird. This transition I'm in, is, it's just, it feels so weird. Like... As much as I balk, balk, buck um, schedules and like knowing what's going on, mm-hmm. I much prefer to know what's going on and then decide if I'm going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I have just been running like I have been. Well, we had this major project that we were working on with my other my other job. And I'm excited to say that some really great things came out of it. So it feels like, yes, you know, where other times you're working on things and then they just don't pan out. So that feels really good. But at the same time, I'm looking at my to-do list. It's like, and then my husband's working nights. So it's, it's just, there's a lot of pressure right now, Um, you know, because the weather, the weather also. So not only is he working nights, but then yesterday with the whole storm situation. So it's been, it's just been a lot at home. Plus, um, you know how I am when I start looking at things and I'm overwhelmed with Christmas decorations. And then I decide not only do I need these Christmas decorations to go, I need to redo my dining room because it's annoying me. And I've already purchased and returned three different curtains. I mean, you know, you know how it is. Yep. Although I did throw out my 20 year old Keurig. Wow. I know. Congratulations. I did. Did you get a new one yet? I did. And it's pink. Yeah, of and course Philip, it is. Philip, he comes up and he's like, really? <laughs> he's like, the house is becoming a Barbie house. I'm like, well, <laughs> that's what I like. And you don't drink this coffee. So what do you care? Yeah, right. You don't use it anyway. Exactly. So 
you know, he, he, he's so, um, he, again, he just knows me. So on Saturday, when all the Christmas stuff is coming down, we're halfway through that. And I decide I don't like this big cabinet with my coffee bar on it anymore. I need to go get something else. Halfway done. I'm wearing the same clothes from three days in a row. Whatever. I know that I have to bring Sawyer to dance class. And I look at Taylor and I go, Taylor, we need to go find a cabinet. She's like, yes, <laughs> antiquing. And so we go antiquing, but she's rigid. I gave her the budget. Oh, okay. And so we found three different things within the budget that weren't quite right. And then mm-hmm. she would manipulate the situation. So yep. I didn't pull the trigger. Okay. However. Yep. What'd you do when you got home? You went on the Amazons? Nope. When we got home, mm-hmm. Sawyer has to change. And then I have to go back out to Greece mm. because she has soccer, which right. means I'm just going to hit up some more antique shops. Correct. And so Taylor refused to go with me. Mm. Did I buy one double the budget? hundred okay. percent. Okay. All right. Did I and send, you know whose fault that is? Taylor's. Taylor's. <laughs> Did I send the picture to Philip and say, look, Philip, this is, and I told him the budget. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not good. true. Yeah, it's fine. And um, he's like, yeah, that's great. In mm-hmm. fact, are there any manly things in there for my man room? Oh, <laughs> yeah. And yeah. then do I immediately call Taylor? Yep. And I say, we have a problem. Mm-hmm. And it's you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And she goes, what do you mean? I go, it's your fault. Look what happened when you weren't here. Not only that, but be in the driveway when I when I get home because you yeah, got carried. Yeah, because you got carried. <laughs> <laughs> but it's very cute. It's very cute. And I'm very happy are with you it. Are going to sell the other one on Facebook Marketplace? No, I put it downstairs outside of Philip's bathroom and we've turned it into his closet oh so not only did i gain a dresser upstairs but now he has all of his clothes right where he takes a shower oh perfect like what is the point of him showering in the downstairs he is his own bathroom full bathroom downstairs because he's the man and no one wants to be near that grossness right plus we all know does he still yes. um air his balls out I, I with was, the, yeah, the hand, hand towel, towel? Yeah. i was just gonna say everyone knows in fact my sister-in-law said the other day we all know nobody uses the hand towel in the no. bathroom no not in philip's bathroom not in any bathroom not in the lake bathroom either because we all share oh, the lake bathroom oh. everyone knows I use the one in your upstairs bathroom is yes. that one okay yes he doesn't go in, he doesn't shower okay that's, that's, that's okay, a girl good. bathroom that's good so he, it just doesn't make sense for him to shower and then come all the way upstairs to get dressed. Like that's no. Right. Keep Pretty your, soon he'll just move into the basement. Okay. <laughs> it's <laughs> fine. Crap down there. It's fine. So he transformed that into his closet, which actually worked out pretty good. But, um, you know, yeah. that ugly ass rug that I bought. Yeah. For how much? $7. Correct. $7. Oh my God. And you said to me, no, wait, I have to tell this story. You, for whatever reason, whenever you post something, it just shows up in my feed. Mm-hmm. I don't, it just does. Yeah. So, but I'm seeing you with your new manicure. So I know it's a recent photo with this rug on your floor with the Christmas tree in the background. And all I thought was, she is selling a gift she just got on the freaking marketplace. <laughs> That's what I thought. I'm like, she got this. And she's like, this is ugly. Cause it was the ugliest thing oh, I've ever thank seen. You. This is so great. Thank you so much. Yeah. Boom, marketplace. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought you were doing. And no. then you said, no, it was no nope. again. Thunder and deals. I can't I went to Thunder and deals and Thunder deals did a restock mm-hmm. while Nina and I were there mm-hmm. and out comes this gigantic garbage bag full of this huge rug, huge, ugliest rug I've ever seen. I mean, it is a contender with your Amish rug. I agree. And you can see that on our website. Yeah. It's right? on the it's, timeline. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That was the ugliest thing I think I've ever seen. But this one, this one is right up there. It, it is. That's why I thought you were selling it. Orange and blue and gray and it is Almost not okay. borderline but speckle painted. <laughs> exactly. It, it looks bad. Yeah, it does look like speckle paint. But how much did I buy it for? $7. And how much did I put it online for? $100. Did I get an offer? Yes. Absolutely did. Hilarious. I can't. Absolutely did. It's still stupid. They're coming to pick it up tomorrow. <laughs> As we're talking about how crappy this rug is. Right. I mean, I'm sure it's a nice rug. It's just ugly. Exactly. But that, that's how you thrift mm-hmm. right there. Mm-hmm. You're not picking it for your house, mm-hmm. but you picking it because you know someone wants a nine by 11 rug. Mm-hmm. Huge. Those things are expensive. They are because I just bought one off the Amazon mm-hmm. and it wasn't that big new no. it was maybe a five by seven and it was a hundred bucks exactly mm-hmm. so the fact that i'm selling in a nine by 11 rug for a mm-hmm. hundred dollars mm-hmm. i could sell it for twenty dollars which is funny because in your house the way the picture was it looked like a four by five. Oh, it looks small oh i'm surprised it was that big actually because it's from thunder deals i think it was um 11 feet 
by like eight feet, 10 inches. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> it was, it was like, a little so odd. <laughs> it's like some odd side. Off. Nobody cares. That's but again, funny. I could have sold it for 20 bucks and made 13 mm-hmm. bucks still but turned myself a profit. I can't. So as we know, this is now my side gig. I this is what I do. The difference is you, again, this is empathy. You're like, oh, there's a person out there who would like that. And in my mind, I'm like, no fucking person would ever mm-hmm. buy that because mm-hmm. it's hideous. Mm-hmm. I'm not good at that. Mm-hmm. I only like what I like. Yep. Now, now, we've decided if I was going to design houses, they would only be in my style. Correct. I'm not good. But that's why we can't go into that business. I'm not good at going outside of my style. Because we would need to tell people, you leave, we'll take care of this. Mm-hmm. And then when you come home, we'll show it to you. Mm-hmm. Don't tell us your opinions because we don't care how you feel right. about it. And then we'll leave and you can do whatever you want. Right. But this isn't about you. Right. Right. I know. I'm not good at that. I know. Is it our time? Nope. We no. still got a couple more minutes. So we got five more questions. So. <laughs> five so, more questions. Okay. Um. I do. I wanted to tell you, this is kind of sort of an empathy problem. Okay. Um, but I needed to tell you about this situation that happened to me on one of these Facebook groups <laughs> and what my reaction was I to it. I can't. And I wanted to know if this was normal. I'm already going to preface it by saying no. <laughs> but okay. I want to know if this is a normal person's reaction. Scott, I'd like to know if this is a normal person's reaction. Okay. You should probably ask a normal person, but I'll try. <laughs> right. Well, me, I'm normal. So go ahead. Okay. So I'm on this group on Facebook mm-hmm. and it is called <laughs> Weird and Wonderful Secondhand Finds That Just Need to Be Shared. Mm. Okay. 3.1 million <laughs> members. <laughs> million. Okay. Okay. Now, um, the things that are posted on this group make me so happy. They are, they range um, from things that people found at a thrift shop, things that people found antiquing, like odd, oh my gosh, can you believe this is being sold, you know, kind of things. So you have to join the group in order to really appreciate what people are finding. So when you and I were antiquing the other day, like right here, this one is um, a pig phone. Stop it. Okay. This, oh. is a, this is a phone My God. that is in the shape of a pig. Somebody had that in their kitchen. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and um, like there's a lot of couches found this beautiful couch. No, that's not. That's not pretty. It's not. But people, the things that people find on here, they mm-hmm. absolutely love. Mm-hmm. And then because I don't know where this group originated, but they always compare the items to the size of a banana. <laughs> So right? random. Okay. So, so for instance, here's one right here. Here's a picture, and it will always say banana for size. Okay. Okay. So, they'll have a picture of a banana next to whatever the item is. Okay. And sometimes when they don't have a banana, they'll say, "Sorry, didn't have a banana." <laughs> <laughs> right. The other thing that they do is everyone has a house hippo. Have you heard of this? I think it's Canadian. I don't really know. A house hippo? But they'll like say, the animal? finally found my house hippo. Found my house hippo in an estate sale. Because apparently hippos will bring you good we have, luck. We have two two hippos. But, Wait, are you serious? Like, yeah, is they're it, in the garden. But did you get it because it's a house hippo? They came with the house. Okay, someone else had a house hippo. Yeah. Right? So we inherited their, we bought their house hippo. House hippos. Just yes. Two of them. Yes. Goodbye. Oh, look at you'd like this. Can you order? Can you order? Can you order no, you there? can't order it. This is this is. People. I need to have that. Is that this a is. Pee, it's. A, I don't know. It's so stupid. I need she to have that. Loves these things so much, and it's not okay. I did get rid of the one with the blue eyes. You did. Mm-hmm. What'd you do with it? It's in the car. Wow, you're good willing it. Mm-hmm. Wow, congratulations! It's a mm-hmm. big day for you. I know. It's a really big day really for you. Sad. So you wanna you wanna join this group, okay? Because it's just absolutely fascinating. So you and I are out thrifting mm-hmm. the other day. And what do I find? Something that I feel is worthy of the group. <laughs> okay. 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 So the first thing, the first thing I found was this um, mug set that is in the mushroom pattern. That's Anyone? why you were taking these pictures. Yeah. Hilarious. And what did you think I wanted it? I d- thought you were that mushroom pattern. It. You that- know who I thought you were sending it to? Your sister-in-law. Yeah, I did. I I figured she'd want it. I'm like, because she's on the weird and wonderful page too. Yeah, but I figured she'd want it. No, no, but that, 
that goes, they are a hot commodity. Those, anything that's in that mushroom pattern from Sears, Uh it's like a canister set. My mom had it. They Mm -hmm. go for hot cakes. So funny. But this thing was 150 bucks. And I'm like, that's about what you would get for it. So you want to find it at a thrift store for like two or three dollars. So again, you can make some cash (laughs) off of it. Okay. So next episode on American Pickers. That's right. I do love that show. Yep. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I say to Shannon, because I, I got to talk to Shannon about this mm-hmm. because I'm starting to have some feels. Okay. okay? And she's on the group. Mm-hmm. I just posted on the Weird and Wonderful Secondhand Facebook group. I am having an anxious stomach, dot, dot, dot. She says, LOL, why? I said, what if my post's not good enough? <laughs> she's like, does it have to be approved? I said, yes. She's like, what item did you post? I said, oh my God, I can't show you. Why? I said, what if you hate it? And you tell me you hate it. I won't sleep all night. I can't. I said, but what if it gets approved and people hate it or they don't think it's funny? They think I'm a loser (laughs) and not worthy of being in the group. She said, LOL. I said, oh, my God, talk about vulnerable. And I said, and then this post makes me feel better. So then I screenshot this post. Now, this is a picture of. I don't know, some some hutch cabinet. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm thinking to myself, that ain't weird or wonderful. Nobody cares about that. I found that on the side of the road, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. I'm like, my post is better than that. So it can't be too bad. So I said, mine ain't that bad. <laughs> and she says, ha, ha, ha. I said, that one only had 26 reactions. If I get 25, I'll die. <laughs> oh, my God, I can't. So she's like, that ain't weird or wonderful. I said, that's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. Mm-hmm. So I said, I will straight up die. Exactly. It's so boring. You got it off a free group. Nobody cares. Move along. Mm -hmm. I'll send you the pick, the one that I didn't post, but I still thought it was good for the group. And then I I post the picture to her. This is the mushroom set. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sears mushroom set. Mm -hmm. Now this is my tester post. Those were $100. $150. Remember how you made me put the DVD next to it so that I could see um, the size? What you said was, I need something that's an average size. Yeah. And I'm thinking... Right. Okay, Shannon okay. must, she must the really DVD. want these little teeny tiny cups. Right. No. Hilarious. I said that DVD is for size. It's the cutest little set. She's like, oh my gosh, did you buy that? <laughs> question mark, exclamation point, question mark, exclamation point. Those go for a lot. Mm-hmm. I said, I know people love that shit. No, it was something like $150. She's like, yeah, that's too much, but they're cute. Mm-hmm. So yesterday mm-hmm. I say, why hasn't my post been posted to Weird and Wonderful yet? I am starting to twitch. I can't. She's like, it's okay. The groups are slow. Okay. Now. Yeah, because these people probably have day jobs. But things keep getting posted. So things keep getting posted to the group. <laughs> okay. And. The moderator doesn't like you. Ma- that's, <laughs> that's what I'm thinking, Scott. Stop I don't it. need you to Moderate validate that for me. This is this is don't be mean to me because I'm having a hard time Not with this. Mean. This is what's going on. Do for you me. know, do you know, like the worst person, the, potentially one of the worst people in the world are those group moderators because they wield their power like they're these <laughs> despots that can they're make like, or break They're like the secretaries at the DMV. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Like, oh, no, that bitch didn't just post that. She is. I, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to wait four days to approve her post. Do you think that's what's happening? Could be. This is this is what's making me nervous because. OK, I mean, so this is what I want to know if this is if this is normal or do people busy. feel this and then they just don't <laughs> talk about this stuff. Right. I'm not kidding. I can't stop thinking about it. I think about it three times a day and I'll go and I'll check the post and I'll be like, do you think it's posted yet? And then when it does get posted, y'all better watch out. I'm going to have cramp attacks because (laughs) I'm going to need to know. I think it's fantastic. But talk about vulnerability. What if people hate it? What if it doesn't get any posts? What some of these posts get two point five thousand likes. I even wrote a catchy (laughs) Like comment on it. Now I'm I'm being this is serious. The equivalent. Right now. You you just described the problem with our youth today. <laughs> that is what <laughs> you did. What? The problem is you're you're equating your self worth with what people think of you and how many likes you get. Who the hell cares? 
Oh my it's God. It's not really my self worth. Well, then what is it? I just want acceptance. Uh-huh. <laughs> and you want to be seen. I just want people to think that what I found at the store is as good as what I thought it was. And what and happens when it's they a don't? good fit for the group. And what happens when they're like, mm, that ain't it? I'll remove myself from the group because I will feel like I I must have missed something. Right. Which means you can join another group. This is what I but meant the other day good. when I said there are winners and there are losers. So I would be a loser in that case? Yeah. Scott, post my post, please. Post the picture of what I'm putting up there. You sure you want me to do this? No, <laughs> Scott, I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, that's cute. That, my friends, when I saw it, I immediately thought the weird and wonderful group oh, yeah. needs oh, yeah, no, to that's, see this. Yeah, and oh, yeah. Actually, that, there are, it's actually kind of cool. Th- it's an Elvis lamp. There yep. are Elvis freaks that would go nuts for that thing. Oh, 100%. And did I second guess if it was Elvis? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I did. I'm like, <laughs> oh my God. The <laughs> level of anxiety that it I had. It could be Liberace, but it's probably Elvis. Because <laughs> I think my first line of my sentence was, this hunk of hunk of burning lamp. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it makes me feel better that you guys laugh. It makes me feel better. And then I said something like... <laughs> This is making me feel better. Then I said something like him and his blue suede shoes stayed at the antique store where I found him in upstate New York. And then at that very Mm -hmm. end, I said, thank you very much. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, thanks, guys. Mm -hmm. So you Mm -hmm. liked that? Yeah. You like that? Yeah. Well well done. I I don't question whether you're funny. (laughs) My uncle. (laughs) Hunk a bunk of burning lamp is is great. Thank you. That's Hunk a hunk of burning lamp. Mm Mm-hmm. So, okay, mm-hmm. I do. Thank you for validating me, you yeah. guys, because I feel better because I was taking a risk of putting that lamp out there and also taking a risk trying to be a little comic. And, yeah. and I, think, you know? I think if 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 that's not appreciated on this this weird group, then it's living up to its name. It's the it's thank the group's you. fault. Oh, yeah. yes. Oh, thank yes. you, guys. Time to go. Thank you, guys. Let's join another one who's going to appreciate you. you. For, for who for I who am. Are. Yeah, find, because I'm funny. Yes. You could probably find uh-huh. an Elvis lamp group, <laughs> honestly. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, my God. Excuse me, I gotta go sit on the toilet. Uh-huh. I'll tell you about when I went to Graceland. Ooh. Didn't he die on the toilet? He did. Uh-huh. <laughs> Oh, thanks, guys. I really appreciate that. I feel better. Anyway, I'll keep you up to date with what happens Please there. Do. But um, that's that's my story about the weird and wonderful group. And mm-hmm. maybe you should join it. And also when you join it and you see that that gets posted, mm-hmm. maybe like it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, it's the last it's the last thing you'll do in your 40s. In your, in your 40s. <laughs> in my 41 years. Is get my post approved. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Maybe it'll be your it'll, birthday birthday. It gift might be tomorrow. it might be on my birthday. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we ended, right? Okay. I loved that. Me I don't know about all the sympathy stuff. Did stuff. you buy that um, at a store? In a hunk of hunk of burning, burning lamp. <laughs> I love you too. And if you love us, please like and subscribe to More Love, the Power of Empathy podcast, wherever you get your podcasts. See you next time. Bye.